seats. I'm Megan Server Crime Potter. We are back again at the uh, South Broadway Athletic Club in St. Louis, Missouri for more of uh, MMWA SICW. Going to lead it off with uh, one-on-one -on -one action here as you get a look at the now the uh, reigning MMWA SICW Tag Team Champions, the Big Texan and Tony Reyes. Big Texan usually teams up uh, with uh, Waco as the uh, Texas Hangman, but uh, both men decide to uh, do uh, something different as Big Texan has uh, a different uh, tag team partner. There's really not much of a tag team division at a MMWA SICW, they just recently captured the uh, tag titles from the veteran team of the uh, Lumberjacks, but uh, the tag team division is uh, pretty thin there at uh, MMWA. You'd think um, any of the established uh, tag teams around the St. Louis area would uh, come, up, come over to MMWA to uh, challenge for those uh, tag titles, but uh, there, it just has not uh, happened. Now we hear the music for the uh, opposition of the Big Texan. Max Archer, the most underrated competitor at uh, MMWA SICW, the uh, last graduate of Gateway Championship Wrestling, who uh, refereed for the company for uh, quite some time, but uh, never actually finished his training until uh, just uh, when it closed. So, Max Archer, uh, Ended up going to um, full throttle wrestling after uh, GCW uh, folded, but uh, he uh, settled into uh, MMWA SICW. He's not had a lot of success as a singles competitor. He is a lot better than uh, his win loss records show, but uh, I believe the last time these two uh, had a match, uh, it was. <laughs> It was a crushing squash match, and a match that uh, I commentated live uh, with uh, Tim Miller. And uh, one of the, uh, at least uh, Karen Dellett, uh, televised uh, weekly programs. I wasn't really prepared to uh, talk about what I was doing uh, during my uh, five minute uh, segment on the, uh, that particular card, but uh, here we go. Archer and Texan lock up in a hip toss from the big Texan. We'll have a moment, she saw at the top of the program, uh, a uh, wrestler that, uh, wrestled, that uh, competed mainly in Northern Illinois, although he made uh, some trips down to the Central Illinois area. For uh, New Midwest Wrestling and uh, New Breed Wrestling Alliance, among others. Pocket Rocket Eric Marks passed away tragically at the uh, young age of 30. The gentleman uh, was mainstay for um, promotions that ran out of the, the South Peru area in Chicago. Basically, wrestled along the uh, I-80 corridor. And uh, Eric Marks um, was about to uh, receive a contract offer from Dreamwave Wrestling, according to Jay Repsol, uh, when posting it on uh, his uh, Facebook page that uh, Eric Marks, the pocket rocket, passed away. Uh, sad to say, though, that uh, his uh, the cause of death 
was not by natural causes. From what little has been revealed about the circumstances of uh, his uh, death, uh, he passed away in his home um, the uh, last weekend of June. So, Pocket Rocket, Eric Marks, uh, is going to be missed by uh, many. He did wrestle for uh, New Midwest was, uh, back in uh, 2005. Last wrestled in March of 2005 in the main event against uh, Guy Smith. Tony sucks! Tony sucks! Tony sucks! Tony sucks! Tony sucks! Tony sucks! Well, while I was giving my condolences to, uh, Eric Marks, uh, his passing, uh, there is a match going on. And Eric, um, Max Archer sends, uh, the big Texan into the post. So Tony Ray's, uh, decided to, uh, interfere in the contest. That was... Tony Ray's, uh... Rejecting himself into the matchup, and Big Texa with a hard chop to the chest of Max Archer. The Big Texan rolls in to break the count. It's the last time that these two uh, faced off, though, so Waco was uh, interfered heavily in his match. The last time these two met, two uh, faced off back in December. Whatever it was, I'm not sure what it was. Waco off the... Well, it's not Waco, it's the big Texan. I mean, these two are... Wear the same attire. Waco is a little bit smaller than big Texan. Big Texan is... Over 300 pounds. Waco just under 300 pounds. As uh, the big Texan puts... Max Archer on the top rope. Big Texas is not somebody that climbs the ropes. And Archer to the top. Scott watch his head. Cross by off the top and takes down the Texan. There's a cover. Two count. Max Archer thinking he's got a second wind here. Drops an elbow. Leg drop. This big text has a hard. Wow, Max Archer just backed into him with that uh, roaring elbow. It's a two count. And Archer slugs away at the big Texan. Archer running drop kick. I think uh, Big Texan has a big old tear in his pants because I can see right through them. Archer drops another elbow on the Big Texan. Now I should hope that uh, he's landing those shots because uh, Texan's a big target, but oh, Big Texan just absorbed a t absorbs a ton of punishment and just one clubbing blow takes down Max Archer. Max Archer's pretty much Max Archer's a light heavyweight. He should be competing against a light heavyweights, but uh, this is clearly a mismatch. Which is why I say Max Archer is the most underrated competitor at uh, MMWASICW as the big Texan is choking away on Max Archer. And Texans continuing the assault on the last graduate of GCW. Max Archer dumped to the floor and Tony Race! Referee caught him this time! And Tony Race 
has just been ejected from ringside. And good grief, Big Texan should be able to defeat Max Archer by himself. He doesn't need Tony Race's help. Pretty much these guys are just a couple of thugs beating up on the, an underdog. There's really no reason for it. Max Archer. Actually, he's got the Texan stunned here. Ah! Oh, famous sir from Max Archer out of nowhere. Archer continuing to work, but uh, Texan uh, stops Eddie Rowley and delivers a lariat. Even with Tony Ray's gone, Max Archer is not much of a match for the big Texan. Double underhook into a powerbomb. And that's going to be it. One, two, three, goodbye. Too much. Big Texan, too much for Max Archer, although Tony Ray's uh, did some of the damage. It would have been fine if uh, the referee just called for disqualification instead of let the match continue, but the Big Texan wins this match in eight minutes. 45 seconds, and Tony Race is back out here. Oh, the Texans going to leave. All right. When we come back, we'll have our main event. We'll be joined by a very special guest color commentator. Stay tuned to the MBS. Nosebleed Seats TV on demand anytime. Just go to stlwc.lip.tv, select your episode, watch and enjoy the show. The MBS TV on stlwc.lip.tv. May have been time here at the MBS and uh, be sure to check out uh, the website for Missouri Wrestling Alliance. So no no championship wrestling by going to mmwasicw.com. We see coming out to the ring, Kansas City Killer, former NWA Central States Champion, Mark Sterling. Mark Sterling lost the uh, Central States title to. Uh, Fellow uh, teammate Jeremy Wyatt. Referee for this contest is uh, Keith Smith Jr. The ring announcer is Ben Simon.
this time, for the first time ever, my colleague at the St. Louis Wrestling Community, Patrick Brandmeier. Welcome to the program. Well, how was your weekend? Uh, I don't know. It's like uh, we're in our third hour at uh, MMWA, SICW. This main event was supposed to be Rhino versus Mark Sterling, but where's Rhino? I mean, we've seen Mark Sterling and his compatriots like Jeremy Wyatt engage in a little bit of subterfuge in the past. You have to wonder if they did something backstage. But right now we're seeing Dave Vaughn come out here. Wrestled a grueling match earlier tonight against Brandon Espinosa where he lost the television championship. You can see he's still hurting from that. And I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if anything's happening to Rhino. I wonder what happened to Rhino, but I also wonder if the, uh, Missouri Athletic Commission came into play again, which that is an outrage. He knows. Uh, but that was supposed to, Rhino was supposed to be in this ring right now. It wasn't supposed to be David Vaughn. Yeah, like I said, David Vaughn already wrestled a 20 minute or so match earlier against Brandon Espinosa. He's already had a very long night. You can see him holding his back. Yeah, I imagine he's sore. I mean, You're going at, up against a relatively fresh Mark Sterling, who obviously in phenomenal condition. We know that about Mark Sterling. Always keeps himself in great shape. And Mark Sterling going to work on the back of one David Vaughn. Well, you may not agree with it, but it's smart strategy. If someone has a weakness, you go after them. And there's an uppercut from Vaughn, but there's a kick to the gut. I believe these two competed once before at a show with Mr. Ronda left. They went to a time limit draw at that point. But a zero count. Well, these, these two are not the types to get beaten so easily. I mean, we saw earlier it took a low blow and a handful of tights for Brandon Espinosa to win the television championship. Vaughn captured just about every championship in this organization in a very short amount of time. He's been a tag team champion, junior heavyweight champion, television champion, and heavyweight champion. And there's a jawbreaker from Sterling. Irish whip off the ropes, knee to the gut. And down goes David Vaughn. Vaughn, very impressive in his first couple of years in the sport of professional wrestling. I believe he's also been training down at Harley Race's wrestling school. So that's quite a trainer to have to learn from. Stump to the back from Sterling. And Sterling is just having his way with this fairly weakened David Vaughn. Mark Sterling, no shortage of confidence. And you know that going into this match, he realizes he's got an opponent that already wrestled earlier tonight. And he was preparing for Rhino to compete tonight. And I mean, David Vaughn, uh, compact powerhouse, kind of similar to Rhino in some respect. They even both use their own versions of the spear or the gore. So I would imagine there's a certain degree of similarity in that regard, though Rhino obviously International credentials, been a champion in WWE and WCW, TNA, ECW, of course. But it's really unfortunate that we did not get to see Rhino in action tonight. Uh, Mark Sterling looking to pick up a win no matter who his opponent is here. That was the scheduled main event, Rhino versus Sterling. We did see Rhino earlier on signing autographs for the fans here in attendance. Nobody's let on that Rhino is not a, permitted to wrestle, it looks like. Oh, hard weapon in the corner. Staying on that bat. There's been a lot of talk about re-regulating wrestling in the state of Illinois due to the recent startups of three promotions in Springfield in the span of two months. Um, licensing is definitely a double-edged sword. I mean, some regulation will weed out some of the, I guess, lesser products. But Unless other, you're in Arkansas, then anybody off the street can get a license. I mean, on the other hand, it could really 
put a crimp in legitimate organizations who have to jump through hoops to get licensing. I remember GCW having a lot of issues with that in the past. And Sterling, like I said, looking to pick up a win regardless of who his opponent is. We saw him wrestle the heavyweight champion Gary Jackson here last month. I believe they went to a double count. And Sterling, a lot of gold to his resume. Former NWA Central States champion. I believe he held the NWA Kansas championship. I don't know about the Kansas title, I know. But uh, Sterling, definitely the Central States title, he lost it to fellow Kansas City killer Jeremy Wyatt. And kind of an unusual situation at that point, but yes, Jeremy Wyatt, current NWA Central States champion, Sterling, uh, looking to pick up a little more goal. I can imagine that if he beats the former multi-time champion here, Dave Vaughn, then he's going to be in line for more championship opportunities. And here it is, fall away slam, kip up by Mark Sterling. He's on, he challenged. Oh, set time. And this may be it. One, two. Two. We saw him challenge SICW Classic Wrestling Champion Danny Boy Hawkins several months ago. And there's a mess with that one. There seems to be a desire to split up MMWA SICW into two promotions. There's a roll up. Well, the belt, one. The belt now held by Ron Howard. An interesting aspect MMWA does not recognize that classic title. Only SICW does. They also instituted SICW. Throwing a person over the top rope will get you disqualified. That rule is not in effect at MMWA. So. It's interesting. I remember when I first started watching WCW in the early 90s, they had that rule. They had stricter rules about running opponents into the ring post or even jumping off the top rope at that point. And it was not a good rule to have. But well, when they had the light heavyweight division, no doubt. But right now, we're looking at... Two great competitors here. I've been impressed with Dave Vaughn since I first oh! since I first saw him in the ring, and he's accomplished a lot. But he's up against uh, a guy who, as I said, has all sorts of credentials across the Midwest, and as fresh as a daisy. No question about it. Mark Sterling continuing to work the back over of David Vaughn. And as I said, may not agree with the tactic, but it's a smart strategy to, if your opponent has a weakness to go after. Now we see the reverse chin lock. I mean, I talked about the conditioning, and that's certainly something that's in Mark Sterling's favor under normal circumstances. Dave Vaughn, as I said, wrestled a 20-minute match earlier, has had maybe about an hour's time to rest, hour, hour and a half's time to rest. Yeah. But still, the fatigue has got to be a factor. We saw him holding his back before the match even started. So far, we have not seen uh, Rhino come out because uh, he was the original opponent. He did come out halftime and uh, pre-show. Oh, double clothesline, and both men are down. Quite the night of action, as I mentioned, our, our new television champion friend in Brandon Espinoza, adding more gold to his resume. And Brandon Espinoza will be uh, competing for more gold at other promotions fairly soon. He got that big win over Jimmy Jacobs, winning an Epic 8 tournament at Pro Wrestling Epic. And Gary Jackson hanging on to the heavyweight title tonight against Sean Vincent and saying he wants another shot at Ron Powell's championship. That run point goes back many years. Drop but, kick. Drop kick by Vaughn. He's starting to get some get some momentum going here. David Vaughn. I don't know how much gas is left in the tank. As I said, he's had a little time to rest, but not with very much. Sterling's conditioning, you have to wonder what kind of what kind of chance Vaughn has in this one? I mean, Sterling may have had his bell rung here. He's looking woozy. There's a kick to the gut, kick to the chest, kick to the knee, back of the leg. Oh, he got caught. <laughs> nice move there, uh, version of the Uranagi. One, two, no. Two. I mean, we have not seen many pin attempts at all on the part of Dave Vaughn. We have seen 
them on the part of Mark Sterling. He's trying to win this matchup. I mean, we're 10 minutes into this one. Dave Vaughn has re now wrestled close to a half hour. Jawbreaker. Close to a half hour total tonight. Insecurity. Look at this. Going for a cover. I mean, two. I mean, Vaughn, one of the few people able to make the transition from the junior heavyweight ranks to the heavyweight competition. Although there's not much of a weight difference, the highest weight you can be is 230 pounds. How many people are on this roster? It's well over 230. I mean, not very many. I mean, there was a question earlier tonight about David Osborne challenging for that title. A nice spine buster by Dave Vaughn. A lot of times we've seen that set up the spear. But the question is, is Dave Vaughn going to spear? And ironically, that is Rhino's finisher, the core. He calls it the core. And we've seen Vaughn use several variations of the spear. Oh, he charges the corner. It's out of the way. Full Nelson slam. That could be it. That's right it. That's it. Mark Sterling. On an already weakened opponent. But Vaughn gave it a good fight, no question about it. Mark Sterling victorious over competition he was not prepared to face. David Vaughn, a last minute substitute. And uh, a lot of disappointing fans here at the uh, South Broadway Play Club are expecting to see Rhino versus Mark Sterling. But well, look at this. Sterling dishing out some punishment after the match. Dave Vaughn already had a bad night. And Sterling's very, I imagine Mark Sterling is a frustrated man because he wanted to face Rhino tonight. No question about it. I mean, he won his match tonight, but I would imagine he would have liked to put that proverbial notch in his gun to fate to not only wrestle but defeat Rhino here tonight, at least in his own mind. Look at this. <laughs> Mark Sterling. Mark Sterling won the match but still in a bad mood. And now do it for this edition. I'll do it for this edition of those Big Seats. I'm the Mad Conservative Cry Fighter. He is. Patrick Brandmeier, we'll see you next week. Don't forget that wrestling returns on Saturday.